guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Now, can you hear that? I can. That's the sound of the cavalry coming. Enjoy some highlights. I'll join you guys in a sec. A free kick. Lafondra. Oh, you f gotta be joking. I don't think it matters where we play away from home. We'll just lose regardless of what happens. To be honest with you guys, I think we could be playing against a League Zero team and we'd still lose it away from home. It just seems impossible. Out wide for Alexis Sanchez. Keeps it in amazingly. Burnett over the top for Ramsey. He's got space. He's got man across. And that man is Iguain. And that's a goal for Arsenal. Six minutes in and we already trail at home. This is going to be another long day. I can just tell already. Sanchez's free kick. And it's gone straight over the goalkeeper's head and in any way. I mean, what's the point in having, having a goalkeeper when they're just going to go straight through him like that? There you go. 2 0 Arsenal. The channel for Fabio is in the box again. Ball across. Mainly this time with the goal. And that is a thoroughly deserved goal. We've been so good today. And really unlucky to be 2 1 down here. Chamberlain at the back post. Iguain and it's another goal for Arsenal. We, I don't know, we're doing so well. We've almost been as good as them tonight, but they are still Arsenal. And that's kind of been the overriding factor. The goalkeeper doesn't come and that's 4-1 Arsenal. There was a point in this game where we actually looked really good. We closed down Ozil and stopped him from playing, but Arsenal have just bulldozed through us anyway. And Mankio now forward. Slips it through for Loveridge. Can he pull it across for someone? He can. Shala's in there and it's 1-0 at the Riverside. Middlesbrough nil. Wimbledon 1. Heralyn Shala on his debut gives Wimbledon the lead. It's finally happened. Middlesbrough nil. Wimbledon 1. We win an away game. Diego Costa's through again, but he's played really wide here and that could be an issue for them. Oh, damn it. Unless they can actually cross a ball, unlike us. City 1, Wimbledon 0, Aguero with the goal. He'll have a long ball. Aguero, Diego Costa, he's got men round the corner. One of them is Gaia right to the byline, ball back across, and another low cross beats our goalkeeper. whoop de doo Manchester City 2, Wimbledon 0. Crosses. Classic. In for Henderson. Henderson lets it roll. Henderson, oh my god, I think that's an own goal, you know. No, Craig Henderson scored his first ever Wimbledon goal against Manchester City of all teams. 2-1 defeat at City is not bad. We've definitely improved. Right, so we are back. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we've had a very interesting uh, couple of uh, games. Not too bad in terms of defeats-wise. Um, in fact, we've, I've, I, we got our first away win. It happened. But first, question of the day. And if we could get four, 500 likes on this video, that would be genuinely amazing if you're still enjoying the series. Of course. Now, yeah, question of the day. Have you ever had a one-season wonder on FM? Um, Generally not. Most of the strikers I've signed, or particularly, I'm, I assume you're talking about strikers because generally it's hard to see another one-season wonder. You know, a defender would have a job being a one-season wonder. Um, John Marcus at Pompey last year was a bit like that. I don't think he ever was able to step up that well. Miles Story was a bit like for the first year, but that's just because of progression. I don't think we ever had a player in the Premier League at Portsmouth that was ever like really good one season and then just dropped off completely. Actually, no, I mean, Kieran Griffiths doesn't fall under that. Again, it, we just outgrew him. He was a hero in the lower leagues, but he just couldn't hack it at the top flight. So yeah, let me know if you've had any one season wonders. And if, of course, if you do have any ideas for a question today, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, so um, let's just take a quick gander. I'm just going to jump straight in. You'll want to see who we've signed. You might have seen some of the names in the episode, but I'm going to quickly go uh, to the squad page and I'll show you. Actually, just do it from the match preview screen. They'll all be there. Um, so Annoying thing is, you know I said I'd sign that South Korean guy? Well, I did. Problem being, he, um, how can I put this? Then went off to the Asian Cup. So he's going to be back in sort of mid-February kind of time. So, players I've signed. I just went out and I thought, you know what? Looking for regens for the future. Sometimes we just need to stay up. And that's what I've done. I've not signed a single regen in this transfer window, apart from the ones I'd already signed. They're all real players. And I just thought to myself, no, we need to get some strength into this team. So I've spent, I don't know, 22, 23 million pounds. A lot of it's in staggered deals. So, for example, with Ramsalar and Manquillo, um, technically they're like 10 million, 9.5 million town transfers, but we're actually only paying 3 million this year. The rest we've spread out. So, if we were to stay up, this was an investment, because I do still want to go after the regions after this, but if we can stay up and get a steady squad, then I can start to bring some of those guys through into a slightly more experienced team. And I think that's a better way of doing it. The reason I was so reluctant to do that is because it never normally works for me, but because we've had such a meteoric rise in this save, I won't be playing this tactic today, of course, um, because we've had such a meteoric rise, I decided that the best thing we could do at this point, because the regions aren't good enough yet. Usually with Portsmouth, it took us six, seven years to get to the Premier League. But the time we were there, there were loads of good regions to pick from. And there just isn't that crop. We've only got three years, which means any that we do get are all sort of, you know, between sort of 17 and 19 years old. And they just haven't had a chance to develop yet. So I've gone after these guys. So firstly, we've got this lad who has been superb. Scored the winner against Middlesbrough. This is Heralyn Shala. We brought him in from Sparta Prague. He's an Albanian and... I don't know. I just wanted someone that was better 
than Kavarik on that left-hand side. And he has proven that already. Because look, he's got that 10 tackling. He's got decent work rate. He's just got decent stats across the board. Very, very pleased for him to be joining us. I can't remember how much we paid pay for him. It wasn't a lot. It was less than he's worth now, which is great. He's on a fair bit of money. We had to do that, basically. The annoying thing is that Listerl has got a highest, earn highest earner clause. So I might have to try and move him on in the summer just to get rid of that. Um, now, next up, we've got uh, Ramsalar. This is Bart Ramsalar. We brought him in from uh, Utrecht over in Holland. He's our most expensive one. He costs 10 million in total. But I just looked at that and I thought, that is a man that we could do with getting in our team. We managed to get a few good players. I don't know what it was. I couldn't get any more loans. Nobody would come to us on loan. Uh, more on that in a minute. Um... Next up, we got a left back. This is Lucas Scherf, who we brought in from Hansa Rostock, who I don't know if they're in the German second or th third division. Uh, let's have a little gander. They are in the third division, but he's not bad. Okay, he's not fantastic, but I just feel like he's better than Ibu Torre, and he's already proven that uh, in the games he's played so far, averaging a seven across the two matches. So for me, I feel like he's going to be a, a better player than Torre. And the final one that's coming, um, I think that's the final one anyway. Let me just take a quick gander. Uh, yes, it is. The final one of those ones that I've signed, basically, is this guy. And you'll all know him, I imagine. This is Javi Manquillo. Used to play for Liverpool back in the day, I think. Yes, he did, yeah. We got him from Atletico Madrid, 9.25 million. He was on the transfer list. I mean, I actually applied to loan him initially, because he was on the loan list. And then, when I... They, he rejected us, basically, and they wouldn't let us have him on loan anyway. Something like I don't remember what it was. And I thought, well, let's try and buy him. Went and put a bid in. They were like, yeah, sure, have him. So there we go. Four-star right back now. No need for Johnny Byrne to be playing that now. Um, so we've got a much stronger-looking squad, and that is massive for us. Um, so, with that in mind, um, Shala is injured, but it's actually only a facial problem, so it's not actually a real, a proper injury. So we'll be able to play him today against Cardiff. I'm really looking forward to this. We won away at Middlesbrough, thanks to Shala. Uh, apologies if that's not how you pronounce his name. If you are of uh, an Albanian background, please do let me know how to pronounce it. So, the tactic itself, obviously with all the new players, has taken a little hit, which is annoying, but I'm hoping that for the moment, look, we're still so close to those relegation places. It's going to be difficult, but I just really think that today against Cardiff, they're a better side than Swansea, though, so I worry. I, I really do, because of what they did to us at um, Cardiff City Stadium. It they absolutely tore us apart in that match. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that Fabio's kind of gone off the boil a little bit uh, lately with his scoring, but we're going to do our best today to just hope that something works. And you'll notice that Nenad Planet just joined us too. Um, a couple more players that joined us in January. Um, Diallo has had to go up onto Yupin on loan because unfortunately no work permits. But again, those are players that are all going to come in as well. So we've got a lot of players that are just waiting. And I feel like if we can stay up this year, our transfer budget is going to be monumentally large next year. And if we can just stay up, I think we'll be fine next year because I'll be able to bring in loads of new players again, um, continue to do what we're doing. And oh no, don't just let them... Oh, Mankio, ball across the box, Anderson. One thing I have noticed is that crosses, are, they are the bane of my life. Like, I'm going to have nightmares about crosses. Genuinely, it's got that bad. Nothing we've managed to do has made any difference at any stage with the crosses, and I think it's just one of those things that we're going to have to accept and try to work around it rather than trying to prevent it all the time because it just doesn't seem to be preventable. Ball over the top, Malpai. There's two players on him, three players. Rolls, round the corner. Mankio, terrible angle. Oh, come on, guys! What is going on? We looked really good against Manchester City. We looked very good against Arsenal here. And yet, we won away at Middlesbrough. And now when it comes to being at home against Cardiff City, we're going to do exactly what we did against them in the pre... Well, we're not going to do that. That was 6-3. But, like, oh, I just... I don't know. We're just so inconsistent in the moment. Oh, it deflected as well. And Adam Johnson's there, who actually scored against us, I believe, in the first game against Cardiff too. We've got to come back. We cannot afford this one. Uh, we've not had a single shot yet. Hmm... This is disappointing yet further because we've got a game over on these teams as well. Ramsalar, ball across, Mailey, cleared it out to Fabio. Go on, get a shot in. Something. Oh. Scherf, we need something. Um, we've got some better set piece takers as well now. Some of these guys, Shala particularly, has got quite decent set pieces in him. Uh, Mailey, cross it down to Masek. Probably could have just brought that down rather than heading it. Johnson. That's more like it. This is the sort of play I want us to be seen doing. Ramsalar. Um, He's more of a central player, but I have to say, he can play out wide too. Masek. So, Matt and Keo, we need something special here. Uh, Reeves. Masek. Oh, he's got a bit of space there. Mele, can he turn and shoot? Finds Fabio. Masek! Oh, the chance was there. That was our first real good chance of the game, and we've not taken it, but it is promising. It's, if nothing else, it is promising. We've shown a bit of quality there uh, in the right. Oh, hello. Mankio. Masek again. Can he slip it through? He does, actually. Mankio's in. Oh, blocked again. Ramsalar. Is there more to this play? Ramsalar. Oh, it's in the back. Oh, that's an own goal, I think. It is. It's a own goal from Johnny. Johnny be bad. Johnny be very bad. I think I had Johnny at um, Granada on my 
outcast icons last year. Great ball in there from Ramsalar. That's what I want from him. Perfectly placed. Not really a low cross, but oh dear. It's one all here, and this is huge. If we can get a win over Cardiff, again, it starts to just extend that gap. Right, well, oh, hello. Looking quite dangerous. Also, remember, Cardiff are very weak down this wing. Masek strikes it. Blocked. And they had two players up there, and he's actually missed both of them, which is a worry. Um, but yeah, Cardiff are very weak down that wing. Oh, Shayla. And we've scored another free kick. We've scored two free kicks in two episodes. It's 2-1 to Wimbledon now. Harold and Shala with two goals now in three matches for the club. I am a fan of his already. Um, he's more of an attacking winger, but he can play there too. And he's got like 10 tackling, I think, which is fine by me. Uh, he can do his defensive duties. But the thing is, um, Cardiff... I've conceded 14 goals down this wing. And we have remember now got a pairing of um, Ramsalar and Mankio on that wing. Mele. Got a bit of space. He can slip this through, you know. Fabio takes a touch. Fabio takes a touch and he's missed the chance. That should have been 3-1 there. We've absolutely flipped this on them now. And I do not want this to turn into the Everton match. We need to get that third goal. Sitting back now is not going to do us any favours. Masex picked up a quite a heavy knock there, it would appear. Uh... I'm actually wondering if we should get him off. Now, the other thing is I'm really enjoying is now that we've got these new players, the bench, Burn, Savile, Loveridge, Leestel, Frankham, La okay, Lyle Taylor, fair enough. I looked at another goalkeeper. I, I nearly got Alphonse Areola from, I think he's at Club Bruges now, but he wouldn't join us. They were prepared to sell him for three million quid, but no. Um, so we're going to go with Georgie Porgy on for Masek here. Um, to play in the other role there with Jake Reeves. Because he's just a very good player, isn't he? I mean, um, it's nice to have that quality off the bench now. And I think that's going to be making a lot of difference for us in the latter stages of the games. Because before, I'd make the substitutions and the team would get a lot worse from it because we had such a weak bench. Now, with a lot more strength off the bench, there's more room. Shayla, ball across. Ramsalar's in and it's 3-1 to Wimbledon. Wimbledon 3, Cardiff City 0. Bart Ramsalar now with his first goal for the club. And surely now, we are going to be getting another win and look at that would actually move us above Everton who have really slipped great ball in from Shala and a good finish from Ramsalar there perfect finish actually the two new boys linking up wonderfully uh, Swansea are is still we'd be four points above the drop zone if we were to win here we've still got to be careful though Malpai the thing is uh, oh wow good touch from Andre Silva go on get a foot oh it's 3-2 and we need to do better the thing is though right we're going to take a little look at the pro zone stats and just see if we can oops Cardiff City so Oh, I'll tell you what. So it's definitely this left... Interestingly, that's the right-hand side. So, I just wonder if we... Mankio's good, and that's where they're strongest, but... Mm. That's where they're strongest, but that's also where they're weakest. So the first thing we're going to do is close down a little bit more to try and prevent those situations. And I'm also just going to drop Mankio... Mm. I'm just going to drop him back a little bit. I can't really do much with Ramsalar. I don't really know what to do in that situation. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, except I can't do that now. I'm going to have to wait till the next set of changes come in. Um, that was disappointing, I have to say. Once That was a lovely bit of play there. He absolutely skinned Anderson there. And he shouldn't really be scoring from the edge of the box like that. Not with such a weak shot. Fair enough, it goes top corner. If he puts up where the scissors live, then fine. But he didn't, and that was a bit poor from us. Uh, maybe could have done better back from there. But I'm also going to put Anderson... Oh, actually, what's Planich like as a cover? Right, we're going to put Anderson on cover there, which means I'm actually going to try and put Planich onto a stopper roll, just to push him out a little bit um, for these... Okay, back one. It's 3-2 here. I still feel that on the night we've been the better side, but we do need to maintain this a little bit more. We need to up that intensity a little bit more. Uh, we're getting a bit more possession, but not enough for me to up the tempo. Fabio's in the space. Fabio must score, and he... Oh, what a save that is from Brad Guzan. Um, Maley's made the key passes. Nobody for... What? Uh, not Watford. For Cardiff's really done a lot of those key passes. Ball in. Headed away. Back to Reeves. Now get that back to Ramsalar. This guy's got a good cross on him. Low. Go on, get it low. And he's won us another corner. We've won a few corners today. We've been the better team. We cannot let this one slip through our fingers as well. Um, I don't want to drop deeper because it encourages them. Right, Savile. He should be running onto that. Maybe look out wide again. Oh, what a ball. Ramsalar. Get it across. Ah, damn it. I don't know. This game could literally go either way at this point. I am... Very, very... It's difficult to know what to do at this stage in the game. If we grab a fourth goal, I might be a little bit more conservative. But at this point, we don't really want to sit back. Not with 25 minutes left. Because we'll just hand them the keys to the game, essentially, melee. So it's through for Fabio again. Mm. They're looking long, and Mankio's done well that time. That's more like it from him. He's in a much more retreated role. Uh, melee. Can he slip it through? Fabio's in again. Fabio's through again. Fabio scored again, and it's Wimbledon 4. Cardiff... I almost said cardio. Cardiff 2. We're getting a lot of goals in games lately, but 24 points from 23 matches. To me, that's staying up form, basically. And I think, with the new players, we might be able to get a couple more away wins and just pull ourselves away 
from the relegation zone or uh, far enough away for it to not be so much of a stress in every single match. Right, uh, changes are afoot now uh, because Anderson is looking knackered. Uh, Listel, I'm going to bring him in anyway. Hopefully he won't make any shocking errors. Um, drop back as a defensive winger on support there just to try and get that extra cover for Mankiw because that's the way Cardiff are going and with that in mind we're going to just go down this left hand side instead because that's where all of our successes mostly come down and yeah with uh, Ramslar into the middle now he can start to dictate the play a little bit more rather than um, being relied on as a winger I feel like he's oh don't just let him Oh, bloody hell. We got away with that there. The cross was whipped in well. But I feel like if we get away with a win here, we would deserve it. We've been the better side on the night. Um, had a little bit of a scare with some poor play. But for the most part, we've been decent. Loverage there in a slightly more withdrawn position. Just get that ball across to the left-hand side of the pitch uh, as quick as you can, guys. Savile. Lots of space open. Mankio's made the run anyway, despite being a defensive fullback. That could be dangerous for us. Please don't lose the ball now. You've done that. Uh, oh, this is... Why are they doing that? Like... Uh, I can't put them any more withdrawn than I am, and they're still bombing forward when we don't want them to. Otto, oh, don't you dare. No! Oh, fucking hell! Like, defensive winger, defensive fullback, exploiting the left flank, and they're still trying to put them in behind, and that's all come from us not having anyone back in that position. That's the second goal in this game that's been scored like that, right? I still don't know what to do here. Cardiff are going to come at us, of course. Uh, we've made all our subs... I want to go. I want to go defensive. Well, actually, we've looked really good since then. Mankio, get it to the left-hand side. Ramsalar, get to slip it through. All the way through. Fabio's through again and it's saved. Right. This is. Oh, I don't know why they're not going down the left. We've been the better side in the night, and we've actually improved a lot since those changes. Just get through. We're looking really good right now, and I want to make sure that we get out of this win. Even if it's a four-three win, it's still a victory. Cardiff are a good side. We lost six-three to them earlier this season. Oh, there's still a lot of work to be done. Goals conceded is a problem, but we've scored four more today, and. We're looking... At least it wasn't like it was in the Swansea game. We've looked stronger than that. That's a shocking pass, but it's not going to matter, as it is going to be Wimbledon 4, Cardiff City 3. Great game. We were the better side and deserved to win, but some errors there uh, definitely do need to be mopped up. And I'm hoping that sort of stuff might come with more tactical fluidity as the players get used to it. We've conceded 55 times this year. It's been ridiculous. But 33 goals scored is helpful. And that moves us a little bit further clear, but they do have those games in hand. So, guys... I feel like we're getting somewhere now. It feels like there's some traction being made. It's taken a lot of money, but I feel like the plan for us is to get these guys playing well, rest of the season, do what we need to do to stay up, basically. In the summer, we'll keep them. Obviously, they're looking good players. I might sign a couple more just for sort of safety reasons, depending on how much money we get. And then I'm going to invest in the crap load of high potential regents, regardless of their current ability. Once we've got ourselves a stable Premier League squad that's going to keep ourselves up, basically, every single year, I want to start investing in the youngsters to try and really go for something. Because that's how we did it with Portsmouth, just in a slightly roundabout way. So, guys, um, next episode, I'm thinking... Oh, what are we thinking? Oh, hello. Let's do Leicester. Let's do Leicester at home on the 3rd of March. So that's actually quite a long way away. There must be international games. So, if you like this episode, please please do drop a like on the video. That would be bloody amazing. And if you liked it even more than that, and the fact that we're actually picking up some wins, then please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will join you guys in the next episode for a home match against Leicester, who are doing well this year. That's another one that we need to try and win. We've got Chelsea, Liverpool, Stoke next. That's going to be tough. Stoke away, we really do need to try and at least get a point there if we can, because those Chelsea and Liverpool games are screwing us. So guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.